Here to dig into this a little further is editor-in-chief of The Daily Wire and host of The Ben Shapiro Show, Ben Shapiro. Uh, ben, I know you were hoping for a more muscularly conservative pick like Amy Coney Barrett, but how does Kavanaugh sit with you now? Well, I think that he's a stand-up double, not a home run. And that, that's basically what I said during the deliberations, and I've, I've continued to say that now that, that he's been picked. Uh, the, the reason being, not because he's not conservative enough, I, I really don't see conservative as a, a great descriptor of these judges, but because he's not originalist enough in the sense that he's not going to overturn, I think, wide slash swaths of, of precedent that actually need to be overturned, where I think Coney Barrett probably would have. It seems to me that he's much more of a judicial minimalist in the mold of Justice Roberts, that in all likelihood he will gradually pare back decisions that he thinks are bad, as opposed to making kind of broad muscular decisions that you would see out of, say, a Thomas or a Scalia or even a Gorsuch. I mean, I had, I, I take your point. I had, I had um, David French on just yesterday who did describe him as an originalist. Tell me why you disagree. He's definitely an originalist in the sense that he reads the text the way it was supposed to be mm -hmm. written. The problem is that this is moderated by his belief in number one precedent and number two, a, a degree of gradualism with regard to his interpretation of the law. So whenever you see a case, you can determine whether the case is constitutional or not on one of two grounds, the broadest possible grounds or the narrowest possible grounds. So mm -hmm. to take a perfect example, the Masterpiece Cake Shop case could have been decided on one of two grounds. is a religious baker who is basically being fined by the government for not catering a same-sex wedding. The court could have said that we are striking down any law forcing a religious baker to cater a same-sex wedding. That's religiously discriminatory. Or they could have decided it on the much narrower grounds that in this particular case, the Colorado Civil Rights Commission was especially mean to the religious baker. And therefore, in this particular case, this was unconstitutional. Well, the court decided to decide it on the narrow grounds. That has right. some pretty dramatic ramifications, because if they decided on the broad grounds, then obviously any time there's an attempt to pass an anti-discrimination law, it would run afoul of the broader decision. Right. It seems to me that Kavanaugh is, is more like Roberts hmm. in that he would probably try to decide these things on narrow grounds as opposed to broader grounds. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, here's Vice President Mike Pence yesterday with Dana Bash. Take a listen. What the president was looking for here was a nominee who will respect the Constitution as written, who will faithfully uh, uphold the Constitution in all of his interpretations of the law. Do you still want Roe v. Wade to be overturned? Well, I, I do, but I, I, I haven't been nominated to the Supreme Court. So if you want Roe overturned, you say Kavanaugh is not the guy that's going to do it. I think that's right. I think the, the, the most likely scenario is that Kavanaugh and Roberts form this sort of minimalist swing set on the on the Supreme Court. Remember, it takes four votes on the Supreme Court to even countenance a case on writ of certiorari. So let's say that Montana, for example, decides to pass a law that bans abortion across the board, except in cases of life of the mother being endangered. And it mm -hmm. goes to an appeals court. The appeals court rules along the lines of Roe v. Wade. Well, then that case gets appealed to the Supreme Court. It takes mm -hmm. four votes for the Supreme Court even to hear that case. I don't think Kavanaugh and Roberts vote mm -hmm. to hear that case. I think instead they just reject that case. And instead, maybe they take another case, like a fetal heartbeat case or a fetal pain case, and they gradually mm -hmm. pare back sort of the legacy of Roe as opposed to overthrowing it all at once. So what can conservatives look forward to with Kavanaugh on the bench? Well, I think that he's going to rule the right way on a lot of these cases. I just think that it's going to be a lot more gradual than they would want it to be yeah. in cases like Roe versus White. They can also count on the fact that he's very much against the administrative state. So he's a, a big proponent of, of overthrowing what's called Chevron deference, which is this belief that administrative agencies get to essentially adjudicate their own rules, that if you run afoul of the EPA, the EPA gets to decide whether you ran afoul of the EPA and the judiciary has nothing to say about that. He's very strong on, an, on administrative rule and, and separation of powers. Uh, he's also very strong on the Second Amendment. So mm -hmm. in, a, in a case on remand in D.C. versus Heller, he stood up for the idea that assault rifles bans, assault weapons bans were basically unconstitutional. I think those right. are two areas where he's particularly strong. Um, while I have you, before we go, I got to ask you about this tweet from NARAL that came up today. Uh, it says, we'll be damned if we're going to let five men, including some frat boy named Brett, strip us of our hard-won bodily autonomy and reproductive rights. Thoughts? <laughs> well, number one, I would remind them that it was seven white men who decided that Roe v. Wade had to be enshrined into law in the first place. Second of all, I'm not sure where they're getting that Brett Kavanaugh, a religious Catholic who coaches his daughter's basketball team and gives out soup at the soup kitchen in yeah. his spare time, is a frat boy. But I guess if you want to look like a sexist, that's a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, not, uh, not, the, be not the best line of attack, but... Uh... Here we are. Ben, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.